Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Inside the Barrel, where we talk all things consulting for ServiceNow. Today is going to be like a hack of Friday, because mm-hmm. doing something fun on Friday. I love fun Fridays. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited too, because I think, you know, from our last episode when we got to write a little bit of code and then do some flow designer stuff, it it was like, ooh, let's let's do something uh, similar as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this one is a fun one. So today um, we're going to talk about um, migrating records, XML records across instances. Um, And for for those that don't know, there's kind of two ways uh, or there's there's a few different ways to do it, but um, the the two main ones that come to mind are the the first one is just right clicking, exporting as XML, and then moving over. Um, so that's kind of the 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 easy way is just taking the data record and exporting and then importing as well. The problem is, is if you have hundreds and hundreds of do of those, like it would take you forever. Um, even if you just select a few of them on a table, right click, export, and then move over. Um, the other issue with that is you may lose some references. So if if you're exporting something and you know you also need a related record as well, um, it's kind of really painful to, to to do those. The other way is the update sets. So there is an awesome utility out there around add to update set, and that needs to be manually maintained in order to make sure all the relationships are there. So those yeah. are kind of like the, the two main ones. There, there's a few other unique ways to, to do it, but uh, recently we saw someone from the community post about um, how you could do it manually. So let me kind of bring up that, uh, that, uh, that article or that message and we'll kind of talk about it so so shout out to to mike uh in the community uh he if you don't follow mike um he does and his name's in this user display value right there um he does a kind of like excerpts um once a week i would say or every couple days about just creative things that he he finds um they could be anything from like the JSON view, adding, it's just very simple things. And this one was talking about merging um, XML files together. And um, essentially what you know his strategy is, if you have to export a bunch of records, you can right click, export an XML, uh, and then you can then um, add other uh, XMLs into it. So you can see from this image, um, that he he copied from other XML files. Sound, sounds cool. Uh, problem is, is that's very manual and we don't like manual. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but like the first and only programming book I ever bought, <clears throat> like the first page said, programmers are inherently lazy because, you know, we like <laughs> to build things to make our lives easier, right? Yeah, manual, uh-uh, no good. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, I thought we would, you know, take a stab at seeing if we could automate merging essentially, um, uh, XML files, and we'll go down the rabbit hole of exploring what APIs that ServiceNow provides and maybe their pitfalls and see if this is even possible. Um, cause I, cause I commented on, uh, his post on LinkedIn and I was like, someone should build a tool. And he's like, go for it. And I was like, Ooh, um, <laughs> Oh, oh my dear. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. Challenge I'm a little, accepted. I'm a little rusty though, so we'll, we'll see how far we get. Um, yeah. And you, yeah. You, you know, speaking of JSON, I think I I, I um, liked a post on LinkedIn yesterday about this one, this new thing called uh, it's, what is it? HT, HTTPs, whatever. JSON crack. Mm. JSON crack. Should I bring it up? Should I show? Yeah, up? bring it up. It's pretty cool. Like it's it's. I, I usually use um, JSON Lint to to look over my JSON files, but this one, this one's nice and pretty. Look at that. Oh, so you write the JSON and then it even kind of shows you the relationship between. Yeah, them. yeah. That is that is really cool. All right. Well, unfortunately, we're going to be dealing with XML today. Uh, Where, where's our XML where's, crack? Yeah, let me let me try <laughs> typing XML crack uh, and see. No, yeah, unfortunately, not there. 
Um, too but bad. super cool. Yeah, shout out to creators of this. It looks like it's open source, right? I see a GitHub little icon there. So um, yeah, open source. So yeah. super, super cool. Um, all right, so kind of let's let's kind of get started. Um, the first thing I would normally do when thinking of let's you know play with XML is what does ServiceNow provide for us? <laughs> um, and so what I found is a little bit of documentation on, documentation on this XML document too. I know that it works in scoped or global, so great great way to start there. Uh, maybe maybe we should do this in a scoped app and get all the ES12. Goodness. You know, I, I was going to ask you about that because I, when we were talking about it earlier, I was like, oh man, I wonder if there's going to, if our lives will be made easier if we throw in a scoped app and, and we're able to use the newer yeah, let's, JavaScript. Let's, let's, let's do it. Um, so I'll do that as we, as we kind of go. If I had and, and then screens. The other thing I, I was noticing, so they call this one XML document two. That means there's an XML document one. So I, I just want to shout out that, look, you know, naming stuff is always a problem for developers. Like I can spend way too much time coming up with names. Yeah. But when you see like a enterprise level company doing one and twos, mm. I don't think it's so bad if I do one and twos, especially <laughs> when you start seeing GR1, GR2, you know, come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if there was a one or like maybe they're following a standard that XML has, like there could be, um, maybe it could be that they were following something else. So just a quick recap, I just created a scope, which you guys all saw and I switched to ES12 so we can use all the, the funness uh, in this. Um, cool. And so kind of, so again, kind of what we're trying to do is create an XML that looks like this. Um, and so what I have is two files. So here's an example of, it looks almost identical where there's an unload and, and then, then you have this, you know, records underneath it. So in this case, I have an incident, right? It just looks like a basic incident and it has also a, um, a work note related to it. So it's this journal entry. And so that's, what's nice is if I import this XML, it will import all of these records into the instance and these records live on different tables. So, so that's good. I have another example of another one that is just an incident. And so what we're trying to do is get this guy inside of here mm. as another, as another line item. So, so looking at uh, this XML document too, um, it looks like there's a create element. So this adds a node, right? So we can like, you know, do some sort of test one, two, there's some attributes as well. And then you can create an element, which. A new two, see? A new two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this, this looks like it would work for us, right? Because if this is the unload, right, this is the, the thing we need to underneath it and it just adds it to the bottom. Right. right. So it, Ideally, it looks good. The, the problem is, is can we just pass in an entire other XML string, right? Or do you have to add that node and then fill it out? Yeah. Or so. I'm sorry, add that node and then add all the subsequent nodes after. Like, is, is it manual to where you would have to do each, the parent node and then all the cascading nodes below it? Yeah, that's, that's the scary part, right? Is like, I wish there was like create like new like, I don't know, node, I, we'll see. So, may, so maybe this one isn't the one we need right now, but this one says <laughs> create an element with text value. So we're, we're getting closer. So in that case, you're passing new and test, which looks like now we have new and it has the value mm. of test. So, so this looks a little bit better. Um, but, but it's still thing, not. But one thing that's also that we, we haven't seen yet is what happens if you have like an attribute? Right, like mm. this doesn't this doesn't show us you know how to add an attribute. So, like like this is essentially one that has an attribute, but right. can I just can I do like new and then equals or something? You know, like so 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 we could so let's let's I mean let's kind of play around with that, right? So, um, what uh, I'll quickly show is Visual Studio Code for a second and. Let's do a new share uh, screen. Uh, 
Oh, um, I don't actually know how. That's okay. What I was going to show is on Visual Studio Code, there is a join lines uh, functionality. Yeah, let me let me let me show it. Let me. Yeah, I'd like to see this. I think this is a a good one to show. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't even I don't even know how to stop the share. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think you've stopped. Like I don't see it, so you'd have to just change. Yeah, my screen, right? But <laughs> your okay. single screen. <laughs> yeah. But maybe I can't. I, I broke it. How about John? Bring up Visual Studio Code, John. How about how about you? I think I broke. All right, screen. I'll bring it up. Screen. I'll get it. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Okay, and we're just doing new file. Is that all we need? Yeah, and we're gonna take some XML with it. And oh, do you want an XML file then? Yeah, yeah. Show an XML file. Uh, let me find. It should, me... it should be relatively simple. The the data isn't important. Yet. You can even just write it out. Just write, you know, some sort of node, which is an XML, and then a closed one. Let me see if I got the right. Oh, no, that's the wrong. That is an old, what is that? That's an old version of this. <laughs> oh, man. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Open. Okay. Um, so let me share. Uh, window. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna throw this on the screen. So, uh, great. Um, so one issue you may find is if you tried to copy and paste this into the like background scripts, like as a var. Let's say you wanted to create a, a var and do this, it would it would like give you an error, right? Like sure. it's multi-lined. Um, oh, we lost we lost John. <laughs> Well, it would give you an error. It'd be multi-lined, uh, a multi-line issue, and um, we're, we're, well, we're back. To I can't, I can't resize my screens without them reloading. Oh, weird. Yeah, um, it is weird. I don't think that's normal. So Anyways, I, yeah. I figured, I figured it out, John. So oh, did you? On, okay. On my screen. So, so, so here's an example of you know an XML file. If and what I'll try doing is copying this. Right, and we're gonna have to do a, cute, a few different shares to kind of show this. Um, and then we go to this screen, and I wish I could have like multiple shares ready. And we go to like background scripts and var foo equals, you know, like that. Or actually, let me do the single quotes since XML has double. Like it'll it'll yell at you, right? Like not not possible. So yeah. um, one fun thing to know about Visual Studio Code is, go back to it. Oh, I can show multiple screens. Oh, nice. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're, now we're cooking. So if you go to the command palette, there is join lines. Oh, nice. Bam. So now it's all in one. Line. Oh, so it's, it's the return character, the return, the new line or whatever is in, whatever is getting put in there between each thing. Yeah. And that then, it does not like. Okay. So there we go. So you can kind of just like quickly join an XML to make it into like a string if you, if you needed to. So, um, okay. So, so now let's kind of go through. So let's, I mean, let's, now that we have this, so let me name it XML string as well so that we can just do some you know, copy and paste. <laughs> XML string. <laughs> Woo! Look at that. And, Let's let's run this. Um, and we're in our new scope. We're oh, but this is gonna run in global any oh actually let me refresh this page. Yeah, there we go. So now we're running it in our scope. Um, so yeah, so essentially what this should do is add new and test at the the end, right? So if we go to the bottom, it should have added new and test at the end <laughs> new oh okay it's at the top interesting that's okay does, 
I was just looking at that. Does that actually say that it adds it to the end? Uh, it should add it at the current state of where the node is. To the yeah, it creates, creates and adds an element node with the text child node to the current node. <laughs> and I think it's because there is a function in here. Let me go to where this is. There's a function to set current element, right? So there is ways oh. to like to, to do that. Um, but that's okay. At the top is fine. It's not a big deal. But the, the question is, is can we do like some attribute here? Uh, like if we wanted to do this action insert and stay, right? Like, is that gonna oh geez, is that is this gonna actually work? Right? Like <laughs> Hey, look at that. And so it does. Cool. So well, well, you're miss actually you're missing the close on that. Like the new doesn't have a closing. Yeah, this is like weird, right? It like added it a few times. <laughs> yeah, that is. Let me just run it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh Super interesting. So oh, it adds. Oh, because, you know why? Because I think there's a parser in there that says, okay, the first word, mm. or uh, yeah, the first word is how they create the closing tag, and because you put something to the end of it, it just came apart and was like, I don't know what to do about this. <laughs> yeah. So, so 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 even there, right? Like adding act like attributes as well. It isn't clear in this documentation, you know. So. Moving along, like it looks like we can get document elements, right? So, so that looks useful. But like again, it's it looks like it strips it strips stuff, right? So, not super useful. Get the first node. So even if we wanted to get something, it returns some some data. But again, we, what we're really after is the whole line. Um, getting the next again also looks good. Um, so this is the only one. So get node, so we can we can get the node, um, which looks like it's good, but there's a note here that's not good for large documents, so now it's scary. <laughs> but it did actually return the node, which is which is good, right? So, like this is something more that we're after, but that's only if we need to to get a node. Parse XML. Um, so this is like if you wanted to create the document. You can create the new document and pass parse XML on a string, or you could just add the string up top. So not super useful for us. Setting the element is like to where we want the current root to be added, and then you know making it a two string. So, so uh, Dimitar there is saying that uh, he thought there might be a set attribute method available, but I, I I was just looking to see if I could see that. All right. Um, hmm. Maybe on XML node. So on XML node, there's a get attribute and the node iterator also. So yeah, it's it's kind of weird. It's like I but feel no like setter. yeah, most of this was made to like do some cool stuff with, but it feels like it's not meant for merging, and that's kind of what we're trying to you know merge two XMLs together at a root node, right? So hopefully ServiceNow is watching. Well, I doubt they're going to, you know, add a function to XML, <laughs> but it, it would be nice. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like our first blocker here is like, how do we get, without doing lots of iteration, right? Like, as we could, even if we could loop through all of this, like totally makes sense. But if we can't keep the actual node, um then like or keep the the entire thing then we're going to run into issues and if ServiceNow is saying you're going to run into performance issues on on get node then like we need another solution right is there anything outside of like is, is there anything built into to javascript that would give us the abilities to build so that's a good question xml so, so there's a, they have another function here called XML helper um, for parsing XML and you can make it two objects. So it turns it into a JavaScript object. So we could play around with this to see let's like what, like the, the issue that I already see right now is like, we still lose some, some attributes here, 
we're, we're, we're potentially going to lose some attributes. But let's uh, let's play around with this. So so in this case, instead of uh, instead of creating a, the document, it wants us to create use this helper function. Um, so I'm going to comment this out and run this. XML helper. So my guess is this can't be used inside of this scope. Yeah, illegal access. OK, so well, that's super lame. But let's go outside. <laughs> let's go outside of our scope for a second just to run it. Yeah, so, so it looks a little bit different, right? So now. Like if we're looking at at this, the unload unload date, so it it has like it has the date or that information in it, the incident, it has the incident and its action. So this looks like we could potentially do something with this, except now we're just like looping through a massive thing in order to to get all of it and then rebuild it. So then we I wonder the risk if we're gonna do it wrong. Yeah, I wonder if that object object is the attribute. Like it, it gets caught up on. I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to say because you have that action insert or update, and you, and well, no, I guess it's there. I wonder why it does that with the object object. Yeah, I mean, what we could potentially just try doing is, um, like log this gs.info json dot uh, stringify obj let's try let's try that all right so this is what that object looks like so we have the unload date we have an incident with an action so it looks like this at sign is saying it's an attribute right mm -hmm. and then the incident, this is the attribute, and then you know it looks like all of the the XML properties. So so it looks like in theory we could do something with this XML helper. One thing yeah. is it's only in, in in global, which is a pain in the butt. Um, um, but it, it does look like if you did form a JSON object, we could make it into back to an XML doc. So uh, sh should we go that route? What are you thinking? Or should we like say, hey, we have the two things, just take this whole thing and move it on the, the next line of this, right? Like what, what do we- Well, but I'm not sure that w without you, you know, it seems like we're, we, we'd have to, like if we wanna use XML helper, we're gonna have to create, um, we're going to have to know where we need to put it. And I think though that may not be as a needed thing as like we need, like we could just say, let's find the last, you like, know, we have to make sure we're in the right, um, the right node within whatever node, right? Like, is it the same level as incident that we would be merging this into or is yeah, it? So, so I wonder if what we can do here, I'm just going to copy so this is XML string, bar XML string two, since you love those. So here's, <laughs> here essentially are my, the, the two of them, right? So we have, uh, I'm just gonna copy this. Cause really, I think, I think we could do it as, as part of the string, you know, once it's been stringified. And then once we get it in there as, a, you know, a properly formatted string, then it, once it's parsed back, it should be correct, right? Am I thinking that right? Yeah, I guess my question is um, if I think oh I think I copied the wrong. No, those are two separate ones. That's okay. Like my question is is maybe can we just add it to this JSON object? <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. It, it, because you've stringified it, it's now just a string. And as long as we add it somewhere in that string, 
properly format it as another string, you should be able to parse it back, right? I think my question is, is yeah, like if we just pop it into it, so let's not even stringify it, right? Like we have two oh, objects. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Merge the two objects, right? Mm -hmm. um, and now we're gonna because we're in global merge <laughs> two objects JavaScript. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh my god, this is gonna be. Oh yeah, if we had the spread operator, we'd be done. <laughs> That's sweet. Um, yeah, so we're not going to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, I think that would that would essentially work. So yeah, maybe object dot assign, which I think is going to get us in trouble. But uh, yeah, object. There are some methods there that it doesn't give us, but and I think it, it takes the first one. Yeah, object two is not different. Oh, just because I have typos. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't look like it. Well, if it did add it, maybe I. These are two different objects, right? Yeah. Do you need to do a copy of it? Well, no, they're they're two different. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't, it's like add one object to another JavaScript. <laughs> no, I think the old, yeah, I think the old fashioned way is, um, I was just looking it's through fun. vanilla JavaScript. Let me send you a, let me send you what I found on that one. Cause you, you can do it. You just have to loop through it and do it that way. Okay. Kind of a, kind of a you know, obviously the old fashioned. Yeah, let's. Let's look at that. Welcome to life when we have some limitations, but maybe, yeah, so it looks like loop through it, create a new object, loop through it. Ah, interesting. Oh, okay. you know, if you scroll further down, there's a method that does take into account the object object too. It's about, think it, it's almost all the way down. Extending is what we want, right? Here's but it does give you, it, it gives you a function that you can. But this looks nice, right? Like yeah, yeah. extend. Mm -hmm. okay, let's, this is where we, we just trust the internet. <laughs> and <laughs> you see all these yeah. memes about pulling code from GitHub, or I mean from Stack Overflow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, the internet wouldn't lie to us. They, they want us to 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 use useful things. Um, and you know, I, I saw something yesterday from programming program programming humor, uh -huh. where some someone posted something saying, you know, when I can't write code, I don't get on Reddit and uh, ask for help on it. What I do is I purposely write the code badly. Mm. and post the code because it looks like people won't people won't help on reddit but they're more than willing to call you out on what you did wrong <laughs> beautiful beautiful uh, shallow merge uh two okay so if <laughs> if the internet or if the internet likes us Object one is, oh, the internet likes Just us. object. Okay. Hey. Um, maybe that did work, wait, no. Cause it, doesn't seem, have, it doesn't seem long enough, does it? Yeah, cause we have, this is one unload and then we have this unload, right? So it doesn't look like it's 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 working. Maybe let's add true to this because I think that was this is deep merge. Oh, deep. Oh, we only see one unload because ideally we'd see two things in here, right? We would see 
like both objects, but we just see object one. Hmm. So didn't work, John. <laughs> My Google sleuthing is leaving me helpless here. Yeah, it's like, because ideally, I mean, it is an object. Like, maybe we can convert it to, I think this is. See, I would just do it to a string, convert it to a string, and then concatenate it <laughs> at, at the right just, point. Just sounds terrible. <laughs> um, like That's why one, we call it Hack a Friday. <laughs> yeah, this one is like, you know, looping through it if it has it. But will that... That won't necessarily merge. That seems like it will. It'll like override. Yeah, it'll like just it. combine it. Yeah. I'm not sure that's what we want. Um, yeah, it's like. Because ideally, like it, it had like notice how it has like this comma here and then it just does another one. Like that's that's what we need. So it's like it, we just need to add it the object to it. So and I wonder if... And so Dimitar... Is, oh, yeah. Well, I didn't mean to cut you off, but Dimitar says that set attribute works and he's chained it to create element. Okay, so we can so we can loop through. Uh, we, can, we can loop through it. So, well, so let's, let's go back. We'll take a pause on this for a second. We'll go back to that set elements because he's found hacks. <laughs> are these undocumented because i didn't see it in the the documentation either, so. <laughs> yeah so so create element with text so let's say new test and then chain it set it oh look at, it is look at that. And then so we set the attribute to be Attribute string action action yeah insert and update so oh new, yeah. yeah yeah okay so we could loop through the entire second one right so we could loop through this one because I think we could do something like um uh, like we can get the document element of the second one. So where is that function? Get document element. So we could do something like this. So we'll take a pause on this for a second. So we're gonna do doc two, doc two, doc two, doc two. Oh, good, good. Okay, so let's see what that returns. So it returns everything because we're getting the get context. But if we get node value maybe. Or maybe just root node. Cool, so yeah, so it gets the whole thing. So that is looking promising. Problem is, is we don't want this unload. <laughs> uh, Can you... If it's an object, you should be able to you should be able to delete an, uh, it out, right? Oh, yeah. I guess first child would be that. Uh, let's see. No. Mm. Oh, because that's a child. It would be the root, not. Yeah, I was hoping that we could just kind of get that. Let's see what if what the node iterator looks like, and then like. Next. No. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I was hoping that this get document element would just work. But so I was I was looking at um 
this. I'll I'll send it to you on on uh, Stack Overflow. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, so, so you can, yeah. There's some. There are some things in there because you can. It looks like you could serialize. the xml oh man so like my my thinking here john is just like <laughs> if this is a string like just find concatenate it <laughs> find the element and just add it to this string and then make it an object like, well we could do that too i mean there I, are I feel like there that's are like tools so much easier <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow returns the root node of the document tree. So the other thing is if, I don't know, maybe I messed up like, hmm, like, cause the issue is, is like, it removes this part. Like if, if this wasn't here, right, then I run this, it would be correct. Oh no, I guess it isn't still. weird um yeah it's this unload that we're trying to get rid of where's your are you missing a closing like that xml that's a single line it doesn't have a closer on it right correct yeah correct okay all right yeah um yeah so my, my thinking is like we could just manipulate the string and like remove the unload at the end, add all of our other stuff, and then just add the unload when we're done. Yeah. Right. Why not? If I because I think of this, it's like remove the unload, add all you want, and then just add the unload back in. Sure. Um, so now we're just doing string manipulation instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know if that's better or worse. And I don't know if Dimitar is going to like us or not. If do it that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, let's see. Like, so, so let's kind of comment these out for a bit. So the first thing we can do is take like our first string dot replace all. Uh oh, Dimitar is gonna try to beat you. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully he does. <laughs> um, with this. Uh, and I think I. Can oh, just, but you're in just, you're in global though. I think. But someone was telling me that ServiceNow actually created this function. So, oh, did they? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so if I look here, it shouldn't have unload or it doesn't. Yeah, let's go back to our scope. And I did unload, unload. Let's see. Oh, so maybe this actually, I need to set this to a variable var foo, because it doesn't actually, it creates a new one. Yeah, so look, we got yeah, rid there of There we that. go, yeah. <laughs> I think that works in global as well. Yeah. So ServiceNow created its own oh, okay. as well. All right. But now that we don't have this, we then need to like regex, right? Everything after this unload, right? So let's go to our, our regexer friend. Regexer. Now the problem here is if you're if you're doing this, you can't just hard code that string you you have to do way more regexing and say really what you're what you want is between uh yeah i get i get what you mean Where, the alligator yeah. question mark xml and then the what's what's the uh oh that's gonna be so difficult I'm trying to think of how you would you got you got big brain this will work you got this job. Well, okay. the, the big so, problem is um, 
So we know we need this, right? So easy. Is that, and that would always be the same, but it's your closer. Cause you don't know if it's always going to be an incident. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it could be, it could be something else. So I think we just need everything after the like one, two. Well, what you would need is a time, like you could do a timestamp. You could do, cause I think you're probably okay with uh, at least two of those numbers, right? So the 13 double quotes. Uh, closing angle bracket. Oh yeah, so you're saying like the what's the digit? D D, right? Uh, well, you you may want to do colon D D. But it's not even picking up. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so we found our yeah this match, and, right? and so the yeah. first part would be just like you know the angle bracket question mark xml because i think you could say everything in between that get rid of because i think i want just everything after this is there a regex for i feel like regex after this and we're done right oh regex uh after, that's all we need after to, yeah it's just like we found the first match and then we just need everything after it uh okay so match after what is it get after the match maybe the plus uh the plus i thought plus just was uh yeah. oh it's, so it's you could do a you could do uh, capture groups right so if you match to the end of that one the second mat the second group right so every, everything after that should be the group two is that right i'm just trying to think of their what the after is yeah i was hoping that Is. Oh yeah, you would have to do uh, so after that first part. You would have to do kind of you know capture everything afterwards. Mm -hmm. So um, probably with uh, um, oh what are they called? What's the thing on the shift eight? Um, uh, oh, that, I, think, uh, I think this is it. A star. That's it. Yeah. Because we got capture group one. Yep. And then capture group two. Yeah. Woo. And obviously, obviously you could fine tune that because, you know, I, I think it's a little open. <laughs> and what's the what's the regex? And I feel like there's its own uh, function here, right? Or maybe there's um, an ES12 one. Well, I, I thought it was a, an array. I thought it came in with an array. Oh, that's just replace. Um, oh, I guess we could replace uh, capture group one. Yeah, so uh, replace all method is 12. Where is our handy dandy example one? I don't want these blogs. Did you not favorite it? It was a different, a different time, John. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> different <time. laughs> uh, but how do you say but you want to make so sure you're on the made, specific they, capture they made this one but we're like we could just do this <laughs> 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 okay i think we could just do replace let's, let's oh you're right though you need that specific capture okay so what's yeah uh regex service now here we go Service now will just give us an answer. Oh, what a beautiful What one. What is page. this? Oh, there we go. Okay, so register expressions, yada, yada, yada. Give me an example. Okay, this looks great. Uh, let's do this. So, and then we just need our amazing thing that we did. 
apparently I can't copy correctly. Did Demitar beat me? So, uh, so not yet. Sure. I haven't. I haven't seen anything yet. I think yeah. you don't do the seal quotes though. I think you do slashes, forward slashes. Oh, on this? No, I think the single quotes are good. Mm, maybe I thought it was just slashes. Whatever, that's fine. We'll see. Okay. Um, well, I think we can like test if this is working, right? So that we pass the string. Then we do the replace all. And apparently they're replace all. Oh, here's how you do it in normal JavaScript. Interesting. Okay, so, so let's try the normal JavaScript one. Uh, and we're gonna pass in XML string and we're replacing i oh, know but we want to get the second group so before we do that let's gs.info foo2 i i thought it was yeah but oh after what's the isn't crazy. it a I match want, I, want, I think you have yeah, to do a match like a match right yeah yeah it's so it would be it so, would be like if you go back to your script, I think it's uh you just do a dot match um with the string. So it would be foo two dot match and then uh whatever your uh XML uh, string is. String. And you probably need to set that to a variable too. Yeah. Yeah. So and then, foo yeah. Three. Yeah. Uh did I oh let's skip let's that for a second. Cannot find match in object. Saying it doesn't have a match in our. Oh, I think I think this is not the way. There's I don't think this is the syntax. Project match surface now. Try it with just do slashes instead of single quotes. Okay. Like this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a like a syntax issue that I mean that's how they're oh doing. so uh yeah slash with the G after it. So there's no yeah, there's no con yeah. Wow. Oh wait, what? that's that's on the string. So I think it's different because like Oh 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 yeah. Um so foo two uh wait. So XML string. Yes on and then foo two. That. Yeah. So we don't even need this. Or you could yeah, I think that works. Okay. So then I think what we can do is like zero right and one oh, okay so the the match didn't like us right because no, it just like i thought like after the match you could you know access it right yeah i thought it, it thought it came back with a uh i thought it was an array for your groups. I thought, oh, stop the madness. Oh, this article is so long. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this, this is like so old. Oh, this, really old one. Oh, this one's from two years ago. It's just, wow. As you can see, we do not use regexes very often. I don't use it as much as I used to. Yeah. Okay, that, I mean, that was a nice cheat sheet and all, but I just want to know. Maybe I'm not asking the right question. Uh, matches rejects. Eight years ago. <laughs> We're going down rabbit holes here. Um, server side script using match regex service now. 
let's see. Okay, so this person is using replace. Oh, see, I'm getting, I'm getting, when I look at it, I get a loop, a for each loop. Here, let's, what does this guy say? This guy says, we have our string. So XML string dot match. And it looks like we have that. And then you can console log it. That's what we're doing. Well, maybe stringify it and see what it looks like. Maybe it doesn't like. Oh, uh, like this? Yeah. I don't, I can't imagine this as being a, uh, like a, I didn't think it would be an object. Let's see, you should have, well, I mean. I get this, so I get the colon 55, right? Like we're, we're Yeah, there. that's, oh, that's the first match because that's part yeah. of, but, but it doesn't then, break it into a second. Yeah, this, this grouping isn't, isn't working as. Oh, easy. take off, yeah, take off that. Um, uh, maybe not. Is oh, well, I guess you could do, so if you, um, is there, if you scroll down, what, does it give you a capture group too? No. Okay. So do this up there. Um, put. This, so this does. Oh, that does give you a capture group too. But I don't know if that's correct, right? So. Oh, yeah, see, it's giving you the same response. Yeah, so there's group one and then. Group two is, is correct. This is what we want, right? Mm -hmm. So match zero, but we want the groups and the group. So we want this. Like, uh, it should be zero. It should, based. it should be zero and one, right? So yeah, but, but it doesn't. So maybe there's something about Wait, go back a, to your code. Does that? Yeah. My... Oh no, you have it. Okay, I just didn't see it. That's kind Do of square brackets happens. make a difference? Like if you put each, um, like, these like if you square brackets. no put put the put the round parens back in, um, yeah, and then put each section in a square bracket. Interesting. Um... No, guess not. Does this not generate code for you? <laughs> uh, I, it may actually generate code, um, but yeah, I think I think there's something like access group. Uh, it's like. Hmm. You can use matching groups, okay. Applied filter, oh geez, this is not exactly filter.match. Hmm. I blame you, John. Yeah. I blame you. Probably about right. Um, hmm. I could, we could oh, try. Oh, put the, can you put the whole, put the whole thing into, well, I don't know, maybe not. No, oh, that's using exec. I mean, who still does that anymore? Yeah, I wouldn't want to use uh, exec. I don't think it'll let you use it. Yeah, it's so, it's so weird that like, it does capture it correctly, but it doesn't look like it's two different groups, right? So maybe ServiceNow doesn't support groups. Yeah, but that should be a JavaScript regex thing, not, not a ServiceNow thing. Yeah, and I mean, oh. Yeah, see, oh, you could do match all maybe. Ah, uh, that's probably it. Oh, 
guess. Because I was I was looking at this. Yeah, but the service now support the match all, right? Well, uh, are you on a? Are you still in scoped? Is that not part of JavaScript? Uh, no, you're right. We could, but I tried match all, right, and it just doesn't oh. do anything. So maybe match all has a different. Well, context. I don't know if you need the G in it. Because you are, if you're matching all that, I thought that would be a signifier to to you. Where was the? You sent me this it's link, just, right? Yeah, it's just right there at the bottom. Match all or exec. The bottom, I'm going crazy. Match. Oh, oh match all. Um. Okay, so I mean, match all sounds like it. It would be nice. Match all. Yeah, but I. Regex. I don't remember this ever being a problem with regex. I mean, it's it's probably a us issue. <laughs> so like, cause that like, cause this looks like standard JavaScript, right? Take this. So. Oh, oh, so them. it's not yeah, cause it doesn't do. Um, you just create. You, you don't. Yeah, just create a, a a a variable or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Cons. And then we just need okay, so we already have the string. So let's make this string. We'll we'll go to fancy stuff again. Um, <laughs> so now we want this dot match all of the regex, right? Of the regex. Yes. String yeah. dot match then, all regex. And then we're just going to console log. This should be an object. OK, so now if we stringify this object, Empty. What? So it doesn't even like. Doesn't like my matching. It doesn't like my regex now. What's wrong? I mean, the regex should be. Let me just try something like super. Yeah, like that should definitely find a. Yeah, that should find it all. Yeah. That's really. Is that? Oh, that's getting there. It's like let me let me paste this code into <laughs> into can I modify this stuff? Yeah, nice. So if we have that, oh my gosh, so long. Cool. Uh, and then our regex is just gonna be take that away. That. Oh, interesting. That so is maybe, interesting. So maybe our oh, I wonder. Way. I wonder if we have to escape that uh, angle bracket. If I remove it, it still still picks it up. Yeah. Okay. At least it makes me feel better that this didn't work. <laughs> That's a regex problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like match. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. But in the generator, we were getting it to match correctly, right? Yeah, this this one looked like it matched completely fine. Maybe multi line. Oh, I see why. You, you know why? Is because um, it's it's matching. It, it is correct. You can see that it picks up the colon thirteen. Uh -huh. That's why you get all that. Yeah, but so the match is correct, right? Like hovering over this, right? It says group one should be the 13, group two should be everything else. Oh, I see. Yeah, that I don't understand why it's not giving us group two. Maybe uh, match, Let me add a G and add. And 
end. Yeah, it's just like ideally we should to so the zero is there, but the one isn't there. Yeah, so there's something fun. That's like, really odd. This like grouping part isn't isn't working. Yeah. So yeah. Hmm. Well, we're out of time. And it's all your fault, John. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, maybe maybe we'll do another one. Um once we, we figure it out. Goes to show that using the internet doesn't always work as well as we blend it. Well, and service now puts arbitrary rules in place, but I, th I, 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 I don't know. I feel like it's part of regex. I'm always, I struggle with that. Like, it's always like I spend a lot of time if I have to build a regex because it's just one of those totally. things I don't, I don't keep in my mind. Mm -hmm. And no, uh, I think that makes sense. Like, I think at least what was good was we are able to like get the unload away. Right. So all we really need to do concatenate the string. Like I wonder if I can just XML string to this. But the 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 problem that we're gonna run into now is so it added it. Yeah, and now you would need to put oh you'd you need to, to pull that out. that out. Uh, but we could probably do that easier. <laughs> Cons foo two equals XML string dot replace all. Oh, but this needs Are to you be... removing both instances of unload? No, uh, well, no, I was going to remove the this part of like, like that. So like if we're oh. in, in regex, we want to remove the, so if we get rid of this, it's like everything before this, right? So you would do um, Isn't there the bracket. Like a... So do another cap, do another thing there. Um, yeah, and then do the angle question mark. No, the angle, the angle bracket first. Angle bracket, oh, that one. No, 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 angle, not a square. What's angle? <laughs> the alligator. <laughs> no, other way. <laughs> <laughs> Less than <then>, side. <laughs> and then XML. And I think you have to escape the question mark because it's a. Uh, and then in there, do a, another curly or another round bracket inside parens with an asterisk or dot asterisk. No, not there. In between the oh. other. Yeah, right there. Wow. That is impressive. <laughs> that is impressive. Uh, I am I'm in shock. I was that I could just pull that you. that I could pull I was, that off out of I my was, out of my head. I was, I'm in I'm in shock. But now I don't even know how I would. I think I need to put this on its own thing now. So it's the same idea. You do the you do the forward slashes. Yeah. Got it. Bridge two with this. Dimitar is wondering if we can use starts with and then base on the index to remove it. Hmm. Good, good question. This didn't uh, replace what, what is... I wanted to. Oh, but I think it's because I have this actually. There we go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. So, foo two. This is gonna, this is gonna be beautiful. <laughs> so we're replacing that with. Okay. I think you can. I think you can chain all that too, can't you? So this is XML two. We're replacing that with empty, and then we're replacing oh, okay. that with foo two. So all I right. think, and then we just need a print fill. I think this is. This is our winner. So we got the XML, we got the unload, and I think this is gonna look correct. I'm gonna be in shock. Let's show this guy again. And, and I think there's a way to, let's format this document. Oh wait. Just do word shot? wrap. 
that she just thought it was a oh. smell. I wonder if there's a I think it I think it I think we got it. Did we? It Did we just pull it, it out? It should have made it prettier. Let me Oh here, try this. Um where are we I... at here? Select language, XML. Bam. Word wrap. See if that see if that makes it prettier. Now I need to go back to this one. And then I need to switch my screen. And oh wait, oops. Hey, look at that. So I think. I think I that think unload, that's... isn't that the uh, attribute? Yeah. Which I think is fine. I think. Yep. Can... So I think this would, would work. So we got the two incidents. So yeah, let's, let me save this and testing. Um, oh. Use your less used PDI to import it. <laughs> In case you totally did kill it. <laughs> I think I, I wonder if so I I wonder if this oh I just like crashed. Well it wasn't it wasn't that big of a XML, was it? Apparently, I had 40 gigs of memory attached <laughs> to my my window. Uh, uh, wow. I was I was going through that problem for the past two days. Like my Mac was sound like it was taken off every day. I'm like, what is causing the problem? I'd close all these tabs, but once I unloaded my browser and then uh, cleaned it up, it finally turned off the jet engines. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Um, so, I mean, really what's left is, I just need to share that screen again, is just uh, importing it. And I think we're, yeah. I think we're good. Um, wait, it still thinks that is this the right screen? It's not the right screen. It's lying to me. <laughs> it's, I'm like, uh, uh, there you go. There we go. It thinks that old screen still open. Okay, so so now if we go to incidents, <laughs> um, and I don't, I shouldn't have these uh, incidents in here, um, but we're gonna just go by updated. Yeah, oh, maybe updated. Are you showing the other? Did you have another like where you were showing the the names of them or whatever? Hey. Oh, yeah. look at that. Now do they open? <laughs> do they open and can you update them? Let's make sure they're like actual good records that aren't going to be all weird. I mean, this looks good. <gasps> were were there work notes that were associated with it too? Uh so there's so there's this work note. So that <gasps> one that one came over and this one didn't have a work note, uh which it doesn't, right? We did it. So, wow. <laughs> I mean, sure. There are things you know we could totally make it better, but uh... so so really, uh, so we figured out the technical part of merging, them, right? <laughs> the second thing we need to do, and maybe we do a part two, is we just build a nice little interface that yeah. you can like drag and drop XMLs together, and it'll merge it for you. And that's more on your side, right? Yeah, I mean, we could do a portal interface, sure. Like a simple, like I, just I, drag. I feel like the drag and drop would take like hours, but uh, you know, we could do something simple, like you know, like you just want to do a, a bunch of in, uh, incidents, right? So we'd give them an interface with records they could check a box and then say merge. Yeah, I, I think I mean, or like a UI action, right? The, the issue that you have is like it's easy to export these, right? Like when you want to uh, export these records. Um, like if you do, let's see, um, if we do like a search in zero, zero, one, or 
zero zero nine. I think like here you can you know export this XML, right? It's when it's multiple tables that you're running into the issue. So you really mm. need to say export all of your things and then bring it to this tool and you know you know. Merge oh, upload all. upload the disparate uh, XML files and then give them yeah. a a way to I, I see what you're saying yeah we could do that too that'd be kind of uh interesting I, I think it would just be a simple portal page with like the browse icon right like and it's just like like browse file here and like browse file i don't know maybe something to think about but i think yeah. that would be um kind of nice for yeah and, and be... i think that i think the biggest use case is like you did a bunch of data in uat and you need to move that records over for whatever reason mm -hmm. um like this is this tool could potentially be a good one for you i got you Whew. i'm just glad that we uh we pulled it out, out at the out. end <laughs> 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 oh man it was so embarrassing my my regex skills here was was, was rough <laughs> Well, luckily, someone asked me a question about regex this morning, mm. and I was like, "Oh, because they, they gave me a, a snippet of code." And I'm like, "Oh, you mean um, something that's zero, you know, one or zero through nine, and it's eight digits long?" And they're like, "Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm after." I'm, and I'm like, "Well, you got it, but you can do it easier. You could do um, the slash d." And then squiggly bra squiggly brackets eight, but I, but I was like, I think you're missing the carrot up front to start, because they had a dollar sign at the end. But uh, so it got me my juices going on regex. So that's that's the only way I was able to. Help. Yeah. Well, cool. This was this was fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we should and, do more hack hackaday Fridays. Yeah, hopefully without regex, so that my my brain doesn't explode. <laughs> Sure, sure. Cool. All right. Well, um, if you like this, you know, like and subscribe. John and I have a, a lot more Tokyo topics coming up soon, um, especially when when GA hits um, in a, in a couple weeks. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, we're super excited. And if uh, you have any ideas of things you want us to tackle, we're we're, we're happy to do it. And uh, yeah. Thanks, All right. Everybody. We'll see you. Wait, we gotta we gotta get a a, a cheer in here. Oh. <laughs> and thanks, Dimitar, for for all the help as well. So yeah, thank you. All right.